Assalam o Alaikum dear students. Welcome to the 10th program in operating system uh, series and today we will continue our discussion on the file systems. And today we will discuss on the implementation aspects of file systems. Now, uh, dear students, our uh, next issue that was how the files are implemented uh, using various schemes, contiguous blocks, using uh, a linked list, linked list index, and using inodes. Now let's look at how the directories are implemented. As you know, whenever you want to use a file, you have to open that file. And in order to open that file, we learned in our previous program that we have to give the address. Okay, whenever we want to use a file, we have to first open that file, and in order to open that file, we have to give the path, uh, we have to tell the operating system that where that file is located. And how the, this uh, schema is implemented, uh, let's look at that. Primarily, the operating system uses the ASCII path name. I think we covered this thing in our uh, previous program, that operating system uses ASCII path name to locate the correct directory entry. And the directory entry is a critical point which provides us the mapping from an ASCII file name to the disk blocks that contain the data. The directory entry provides mapping from the ASCII file name to the disk blocks that contain the data. And it may also contain the attributes of the file or may contain the pointers to the data structure. Uh, let's understand that with the help of an example. Uh, in the contiguous allocation, directory entry will contain the address of the first block. And if we have the address of the first block, as we know that in contiguous allocation, we will have all the contiguous, all the blocks adjacent to each other. And if we have the address of the first block, we will have no difficulty in, in uh, really getting all the data what we have in that file. And similarly, in the linked lists, we'll have the address of the first block, and all the pointers will lead us wherever in the file we want to go. Uh, the same is true for the linked list allocation. And for an inode, the implementation uh, directory entry contains the inode number. And location of the inodes is fixed on the disk. As such, if we know the first inode, locating the other inodes where uh, related to that particular, ref, uh, particular file will be very easy. Let's see how the directories are implemented uh, in uh, the DOS and Unix environment. In the DOS environment, the directory entry is a 32 byte long, which is split uh, in various attributes as follows. The first eight are allocated for the file name next three for the file extension. As uh, you'll recall that uh, in DOS, the file extension is limited to only three characters. One for the attributes, 10 are reserved, and two each for the time, date, and block numbers, and four for the size of the file. This is how the directory entry uh, looks like in uh, MS-DOS environment. Uh, in the Unix environment, it is very simple because the directory implementation is using the inode. And only uh, what is contained in the directory entry is the inode number and file name. And if we have inode number, we can track all the nodes and all the blocks where our data is stored. Let's see how it's done. Uh, as I mentioned, that Unix system directory entry just contains an inode number and a file name. And attributes of the files are stored in the inode. We say that two bytes for inode number and 14 for the file name. And uh, uh, an obvious question is how an inode located from, the, from its number? Because all the inodes have a fixed location on the disk, so locating an inode is simple and very fast. Uh, dear students, that leads us uh, to our uh, next uh, topic, which is disk space management. 
you definitely know that the disks are available in various sizes, starting from few megabytes to gigabytes and terabytes. As such, managing the space on the disk is extremely important and extremely critical. Let's see how it's done. The first important issue in the disk space management is the size of the allocation unit. If the size of the allocation unit is very small, keeping track will be absolutely a nightmare. It will be very difficult if we have an allocation unit which is very small. And on the other uh, hand, if we have the allocation unit is very large, let's say a cylinder, and our file size is, uh, uh, let's say, 1K, that 1K size file could occupy the full cylinder. That is the problem with having a larger size. It means having too small an allocation unit and too large an allocation unit, both are disadvantages. And uh, the ultimate uh, compromise will have to be reached where our uh, block size, uh, where our allocation unit is not too small and not too big. Uh, whatever block size we choose, then every file must occupy this amount of space as a minimum. For example, if we choose a large allocation unit, as I mentioned, such as one cylinder, that then even a 1K file will occupy the whole cylinder. And choosing small allocation units, say 1K, means that files will occupy many blocks, which result in more time accessing the file, as more blocks will have to be located and accessed. Customary and usual that block size of 512 bytes to 1K bytes to one, uh, 2K bytes are usual uh, in terms of the block size. Once we have decided that uh, block size is to be 512 or uh, 1K or 2K, the next issue is how we keep track of the blocks, how we keep track of the free blocks. And there are primarily two ways of doing it. One is using the linked list, and the other is using the uh, bitmaps. Uh, how it's done, let's look at that. In linked lists, some of the free blocks hold the disk block numbers that are free. Out of the, uh, the, the free blocks on the disk will hold the block numbers that are free. And the blocks that contain the free blocks number are linked together to form list of free blocks. Uh, how we use the bitmaps? In primarily, there is a bitmap, uh, there is a bit for each block on the disk. And if the bit is one, then block is free. If the bit is set to zero, then the block is in use, or vice versa. It means uh, it is entirely up to us. We can, uh, we can uh, represent that if the bit is set to one, then block is free. And if a bit is set to zero, then block is used. Or we can say if the block is zero, then uh, if the bit is set to zero, then block is free. And if bit is set to one, then block is in use. Means it, it is vice versa. We can set either of the ways. And a disk with n blocks require a bitmap with n entries. As many number of blocks we have on the disk will require that many number of bits to keep track of them. Uh, gentlemen, that leads us to uh, the, uh, our next issue. Uh, the file system reliability. I'm sure you will understand, you will recognize the importance of the data uh, for an individual as well as for an organization. Let's say uh, a bank has a data on the computing system and the importance of their account information, of their client information, or, or whatever information about that, but about their businesses it is extremely important to the bank. Similarly, if you are an individual, let's say you are a marketing person, and you have the marketing plan, you have the databases, you have client contacts and stuff like that in the database. What if the system is not reliable and you lose your data, or a bank loses uh, its data, or any type of other organization or institution loses its data? It can have very severe consequences. As such, the reliability of system is extremely important 
and the implementers and the system administrators will have to be very careful about the system reliability. Uh, let's look at some of the issues in system reliability. File system must be reliable as its destruction and damage can have far reaching impact on the individuals and organizations. Uh, there are primarily uh, two ways of uh, doing it. One is uh, bad block management and other is having uh, the backups. Here one thing uh, we have to remember that it is extremely difficult or rather uh, impossible to have a disk which does not have bad blocks or manufacturing a disk without any bad blocks is uh, next to impossible. As such, uh, what should we do? We have basically uh, two schemes uh, to manage the bad blocks on the disks. One is hardware oriented and the other uh, solution is software solution. The hardware solution provides us an in the hardware solution, we allocate a free block which contains the list of the bad blocks and at the time of the initialization, the system reads that this is the list and as such does not allocate the bad blocks to any file or to any directory for storage purposes. And similar solution is available, a software solution. In the software solution, we construct a file and that file contains the list of occupies all the bad blocks. The file we create, the system administrators create a file and that occupies all the bad block. As such, these bad blocks do not appear on the free list. And uh, these are the two ways, a hardware solution and a software solution of managing the bad blocks. And of course, uh, the other uh, uh, system reliability issue I mentioned was the backups. And it is very customary, and if not, it should be, based on the seriousness and based on the importance of the shop. Obviously, the data is important to the organization, data is important to the individual. The regular backups of the systems are extremely important. Uh, the daily uh, backup could be incremental backups, not the whole system, but only the changes that took place in any particular day. Each night or each evening, the daily backups can be taken. At the, over the weekend, another backup could, could be taken. And every month, a backup of complete system could be taken. And uh, normally, in the data shops or in the computer shops, the backup plans are prepared and these backup plans are very strictly and very seriously implemented. And in many cases, the data is not uh, stored, uh, the backups are not stored on that site. The backup tapes or backup disks are stored uh, at some other location as well, at a different location so that if God forbid uh, something bad happens if, uh, to, to that particular shop, the backup of the, uh, the data and the system is available. Uh, the next uh, important issue is the file system consistency. Uh, in many file systems, the uh, many file systems, they read the disk blocks, modify them, and store them at some later stage. It's not necessary that as you read, modify, and immediately write on the disk. There may be some lag in that. And God forbid, if system crashes while the uh, system has read and modified the disk blocks, but have not uh, written them on the disk as yet. If the crash occurs, the system can end up in an inconsistent incons state. And how to avoid that uh, inconsistency or how to really recover that inconsistency in the system uh, most of the systems provide a utility and that utility is run when the system is booted up, when the system is initialized and that system, uh, that utility keeps track of uh, the, in what state the system crashed and then uh, takes care of 
the inconsistency state. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is possible that file system reads the blocks, modify them, and write them later. If a system crashes before the modified blocks are written in the file system, can become inconsistent. And all operating system provide a utility program that checks the file system consistency and which is run when the system is booted, particularly after a crash. Uh, for example, in the Unix, the utility uh, FSCK uh, checks the file system at the boot. Uh, dear students, the file system performance is also an extremely, extremely important task. If you want to save a file, if you want to retrieve a file, if you want to copy a file, and stuff like that. If the performance of the file system is not good, you will have unhappy users. And in order to have uh, happy users, happy organization, will have to keep track of the file performance. And normally, uh, uh, you, you know that the accessing the disks is far, far slower than accessing the information in the memory. Okay? And in some cases, it's more than uh, 100,000 times slower. Accessing the information in the memory is 100,000 times faster than accessing the information uh, from, uh, from the disk. Definitely, there needs to be mechanisms to uh, get the information from the disks as fast as possible. And there needs to be some algorithm and some strategies and schemes to get the information from the disk as fast as possible. The disk access is slower than the memory access by a factor of uh, 100,000. The techniques applied to reduce the disk access are called the block cache or buffer cache. And the caching strategy, as uh, I'll uh, urge you to recall the strategy in the memory, uh, while we, uh, the page replacement algorithms and uh, stuff like that. When we discuss the page replacement algorithm, first in, first out, clock algorithm, last recently utilized and stuff, the same kind of mechanisms we apply and implement in the disk access. So that if uh, the information which is very frequently needed and very frequently accessed, that is kept in the cache in a block cache, or we call that in a buffer cache. We'll not go into the details of these uh, uh, caching strategies. Uh, you can read uh, from your textbook. And uh, another blocks are divided in order to further improve the access. The blocks are divided into different categories like inode blocks, indirect blocks, directory blocks, full data blocks, and partly full data blocks. And combined with the, the classification of the blocks, and combining that with the caching strategies, which are first in, first out, or uh, last uh, uh, recently utilized strategies, we can improve the performance of uh, the accessing data from the disks. The next important uh, element in the file system is the file system security. Uh, as I mentioned, the data is important to the users as well as to the organizations. And sometimes people uh, deliberately try to sabotage, and sometimes uh, some acts of God. Uh, can, for example, if there is a rain or a thunderstorm, and we get water in our uh, computing facility, our uh, systems could be damaged, and so on. Uh, there are primarily two uh, main uh, areas from where the hazard could come and the damage to our systems could, uh, could be caused. And what are those? Let's look at that. Uh, as I mentioned, security has two facets. Uh, two most important facets are the data loss and the intruders. Data loss uh, could, be, could emerge or come up uh, with the help acts, acts of God, as I mentioned, maybe a rain or a thunderstorm or, a, or uh, you have an earthquake and the damage to our hardware and software can occur. And similarly, hardware or software errors and certain human errors can cause the data loss. For example, human error if somebody uh, just uh, overwrites the complete disk or format the complete disks, 
or some hardware error occurs, some disk failure, or uh, some, some kind of circuit burns out, all these can end up into a data loss. And in some cases, the int intruders, and intruders are normally of two types, the active intruders and passive intruders. And active intruders are primarily the people who deliberately access the, uh, the system, whereas the passive intruder unknowingly uh, you can use and cause harm to somebody's system. Uh, casual preying by non-technical users. Let's say you, uh, the computer system on your desk, uh, has, you, you log in and you step out for uh, going to the washroom or get some coffee or get some, uh, uh, some drink. And somebody, some of your colleague comes in uh, while you are logged in, but you are not there. Somebody could cause a damage uh, to your files, to your uh, data, uh, and to your information, which is important to you. In some other cases, snooping by insiders. Uh, sometime there are uh, uh, there are people who keep on looking and tries to get into the system. The other groups uh, in in the team, uh, let's say one is system administration team, other is some database team, other is some development teams, and uh, some other people. Some people from within your team can try to uh, intrude and damage your system. And in many cases, uh, we can have uh, the people who deliberately tries to access the system and damage the system for uh, the sake of making some money. And they, there are a number of, it is impossible to say even the most uh, reliable operating systems and most reliable application programs, one cannot say that they are foolproof. There are always some type of bugs in the program and if somebody discovers that bag and that limitation in the application program or in the operating system, they can try to manipulate that for the sake of making some money. And one need to uh, take care of that in their security schemas. Another uh, area of the intruder is commercial or military uh, espionage. In commercial, your competitors or uh, somebody who has some commercial interest in the information uh, that is contained in your organization system could try to sabotage that system. And obviously, uh, we can have countless examples where the enemy can try to espionage your uh, defense information system and your guidance system or your control systems. And there needs to be mechanisms to overcome that. There needs to be a security plan in each shop to overcome uh, this kind of happening, the acts of God, as well as in order to mitigate the uh, attempts by the intruders, deliberate or otherwise. And uh, the detailed aspects of uh, the security are beyond the scope of uh, today's discussion. We may have a separate program for that purpose. However, we'll uh, go over just a few items that uh, the system administrator could take care of using. Uh, using these uh, tips, the system administrators can improve the security of their systems. And these are uh, securing the environment, basically having the lock and key and uh, some, uh, uh, some kind of uh, guarding mechanisms, some kind of entry mechanism, having some electronic cords for the entry and stuff, so that only the persons authorized should be able to get into the, uh, get into the facility. Another one is user. Uh, authentication and authorized entry. As I mentioned, in most of the shops, we have uh, the card actuated doors or some code actuated doors. And we can use these code actuated doors or card actuated doors for authorizing the, the people to enter into our computer shop. Another is uh, user password, use of the password. And one thing is critical in using the password because normally people do not have a very good understanding of how critical and how important the password is. And uh, there are a number of studies which indicate that the people tend to have the password uh, at the name of their spouse or at the name of their children or their house number or their office number or the uh, number of uh, their uh, number plate of their car and stuff like that. These are the usual uh, 
uh, usual passwords which people keep, which is not good. The computer shop needs to, uh, needs to train their user to select the password or to choose a password which is not easily detectable, which is not easily detectable. Uh, having the, your password at the name of your spouse or a child or at your uh, uh, car's uh, number plate can, anybody could uh, make few tries and enter into your system using your uh, password. As such, the user training is essential that how passwords are uh, created and how to select a password. Uh, use of the protection domain is another uh, mechanism. Uh, use of the access control lists uh, and implementing the access control lists is another mechanism where you can secure your system. Uh, dear students, uh, this completes our uh, today's session. And uh, to sum up our today's discussion, we uh, looked at implementing files. And we discussed uh, four uh, mechanisms, contiguous allocation, linked list allocation, linked lists using index and using inodes. We discussed implementing directories. And we discussed uh, disk space management. And uh, we also briefly looked at the file system consistency, file system reliability, and file system performance. And we also briefly looked at the security issues in the file system. Uh, dear students, uh, this very much uh, concludes our today's session. Until next time, Allah Hafiz.